Good evening. Thank you for tuning in tonight to hear from the Sustained Fond du Lac Recycling Committee about how to recycle right. As we begin the presentation, we ask that you mute yourselves and that you type any questions or comments in the chat for addressing at the end. Sustain Fond du Lac is a grassroots citizen-led community action group whose aim is to support, educate, and nurture sustainable development in the Fond du Lac area. Sustain Fond du Lac invited community members to bring forward issues of concern. Recycling was one of those issues. Eight people stepped forward in the summer of 2019, affirming recycling as a concern. Three of us with a long interest in recycling and the environment are with you tonight. Myself, Louise Borzik, Rachel Kaler, and Carol Smith. Other members of the committee are listed as well. Sister Ruth, Stephanie, and Peg Bradley. We thank them for their help with all of this. We contacted folks in the Fond du Lac Department of Public Works, who then contacted Waste Management to arrange a visit at the Materials Recovery Facility, otherwise called MRF, in Germantown. This is where the recyclables from Fond du Lac are sent. After the tour, the committee set a goal of developing a brochure to help people know what can and cannot be recycled. After considerable research by the committee, the brochure was approved by waste management and the Fond du Lac Department of Public Works. The communication coordinator for the Sisters of St. Agnes designed the brochure as the sister's contribution to the project. Copies of the brochure are linked on the Sustain Fond du Lac and the City of Fond du Lac recycling web pages. Wisconsin Solid Waste Reduction, Recovery and Recycling Law passed in 1990. I'm going to pause for a minute to let you take a minute to read this slide. By 1995, mandatory recycling was working better than had been imagined. There were ample markets for paper with mills paying more than ever. People recycled their paper because there was money to be made. And then in 1996, the market plunged. As fluctuation in the markets became a reality, a need arose to learn how to capture the proceeds of the sale of materials to keep programs running. At the same time, landfilling was significantly reduced. Initially, there were considerable efforts to educate the public and the need for education continues today. This is what the Recycling Committee tried to do with the brochure and ongoing, we plan to do more educational presentations like this. The current ban from landfill includes some of the most easily reusable materials and the most toxic materials. Notice that the containers and paper banned from landfill are the same materials that the MRF in Germantown accepts and has businesses which buy those materials. Let's look at what should not go into your recycling bin. Number one on the list is plastic bags. Recyclables should be loose in the bin, not placed in a plastic bag. Loose plastic bags and other tanglers, such as hose, wire, cords, fish line, and similar items do not belong in your recycling bin. At the MRF, plastic bags and other long flexible items wrap around the equipment. We were told that the MRF is forced to shut the line down and send in harnessed workers with knives to cut these materials away from the equipment. This is not only dangerous, but costly and lost time. Clothing and textiles should not be put in the recycling bin. 
Uh, check with nonprofit organizations like Goodwill or St. Vincent de Paul. Many of them will accept textiles for recycling as well as reuse. The fashion industry is notoriously wasteful, consuming roughly 108 million metric tons of non-renewable resources each year, from pesticides and synthetic dyes to coal and oil. Only about 1% of all textiles are recycled into new clothing. The majority, more than two thirds, are either incinerated or tossed into landfills. Containers that contain food or liquids are not acceptable because they can contaminate bales of sorted materials. Needles and anything sharp are banned from both the landfill as well as from the recycling bin. Propane tanks and aerosol cans can and do cause fires. The Merck has so many fires that before the tour began, we were given instructions on what to do if there was a fire. Food waste refers to food that is fit for consumption, but consciously discarded at the retail or consumption phases. Food waste does not belong in the recycling bin. Personal protective equipment does not belong in the recycling bin either. Currently, this is a challenge because of the plastics in so many of these products. Don't wish cycle. When people want to get rid of things they no longer want, they may be tempted to guess and put them in the recycling bin. The examples pictured here are not recyclable at the MRF. If in good condition, give them away, and if not, they need to go into the waste bin. This slide um, again shows items that are banned from the landfill. Our brochure includes a list of businesses that recycle specific materials. The city makes available special collections for electronics, hazardous waste, and a place to bring yard and bulky waste. The picture on the right is a Fond du Lac business, ACH Foam Technologies, that re recycles special waste materials such as foam coolers or large pieces of polystyrene, the material used as packing around appliances. So, yes, let's recycle the following. Metal food and beverage cans should be emptied and rinsed. I like to put the lids inside the can and flatten the can slightly to try to keep the lid with the can. Aluminum, aluminum beverage cans are typically the most valuable material with that revenue offsetting the cost of recycling less valuable material. Used and clean aluminum foil can be squeezed into a baseball size ball. Aluminum and all metals in cans can be recycled over and over without losing structural integrity. Glass bottles and jars should be emptied and rinsed, the lids and the lids removed. States that have deposit legislation recycle a much greater percentage of glass than non-deposit states. And Wisconsin, as you know, is a non-deposit state. Cardboard and paperboard are desirable, are desired for recycling. You should flatten the cardboard and paperboard containers these materials should be clean and free from food residue. It's good to cut the large, large pieces of cardboard into smaller pieces. They shouldn't be stick, sticking outside of your bin. Now we can recycle all kinds of paper that when recycling first started, we couldn't. Newspaper, ads, mail, phone books, magazines, they also should be clean and free from food residue. The paper should be left in as large a uh, size piece of paper as possible. Shouldn't tear it up into to small pieces, that doesn't help. In fact, no shredded paper should go in the recycling bin. It acts like other tanglers like plastic and, and hoses and so on. Envelopes are okay, even with the cellophane window. The, at the MRF, they told us uh, no post-it notes with, because of the sticky end to them. 
I like to remove address labels that come in my um, mail, <laughs> address labels that are sent by charitable organizations. Gift wrap, uh, if you're recycling that, should be free from glitter, foil, or plastic decorations. And you may put all of these papers into a paper bag before putting them in your recycling bin. Might help with issues of, of paper escaping as it's put um, from the, the curbside into the truck. Plastic bottles and containers should be emptied and rinsed. And you may collapse the container slightly and replace the lid uh, to take up less space. Recycling is more complicated than it used to be, largely because of plastic. Plastic wrap is used abundantly in many grocery stores and homes. It cannot be recycled because the thin film gets wrapped around the equipment in the MRF. Small plastics, roughly three inches or smaller, also can cause problems for recycling equipment. These small pieces get caught or fall between the belts and gears of the machinery. Flexible packaging found in many chip bags is also not recyclable. It flattens out on the MRF's conveyor belt and ends up being incorrectly sorted and mixed with paper, rendering that whole batch, that whole bale unsellable. Also, this packaging is made with layers of different types of plastic and aluminum. The technology to separate these layers does not yet exist. These deodorant containers cannot be recycled at the MRF because they're made of different types of plastic. The shiny adhesive labels are one plastic, the protective cap another, and a twistable gear can be yet another. Clamshells, plastic clamshells are made from the same type of plastic as beverage bottles, but not every curbside recycler can process them. The way clamshells are molded affects the structure of the plastic, making them more difficult to recycle. Our MRF in Germantown does not want them. Foam polystyrene, like that found in meat packaging or egg cartons, cannot be recycled. Beverage bottles and jugs are the most recyclable. The plastic type is generally a number one or two. Other bottles are recyclable. Rinse, empty, leave lids on, except for the spray nozzles because of those are made of different kinds of materials. Yogurt and butter tubs can be recyclable. recyclable. Clean them before placing them in the bin. These containers are usually marked with the five inside a triangle. Tubs are often made with a mix of plastic types. This can make it a difficult material for recycle, recyclers to sell to companies that would rather have a single type of plastic for their manufacturing. Waste management says they work with a manufacturer that takes yogurt, sour cream, and butter tubs and turns them into cupboard doors and paint cans. Go figure. Plastic bags and some wrappers can be taken to local stores that have a plastic drop-off bin. In Fond du Lac, this includes Festival Foods, Pick and Save, Kohl's, Target, and Walmart. These retailers send the plastic to recyclers who use the material and products such as composite decking and benches. These plastic bags are increasingly found with the label as shown in the upper left of this slide. Many now have a how to recycle logo. This slide illustrates what can be recycled. Bubble wrap, but please remove the air. Grocery bags, case over wrap like with large quantities of paper towels or bathroom tissue, newspaper sleeves, ice bags, Ziploc and other resealable bags, 
but please cut the zipper off. Produce bags, bread, salt, wood pellet, and dry cleaning bags, but no heavy bags such as dog food. No cellophane type material that makes a loud crinkle sound when you squeeze it in your hand. All right. Worldwide, over 400 million tons of plastic are produced each year. Packaging accounts for more than a third of all plastics. Plastics have become indispensable. They are found in bags, smartphones, and car dashboards. But almost half of all plastic products end up as waste within less than a month. Only a fraction is actually recycled. The constantly growing mountain of plastic waste causes serious environmental problems. Recycling is the second best option to reducing its use. In 2025, plastic production is expected to reach over 600 million tons per year. A glance into history shows how little of all the plastic produced gets recycled. Only 10% of the more than 9 billion tons of plastics that have been produced since 1950 have been recycled. The best solution is easy to state. Just don't produce so much plastic in the first place, but difficult to actually do because plastic has become so much a part of our life and the pushback is great. In colonial time into the early 1900s, waste not, want not was the mantra reflecting a different sense of the value of material goods than is ours today. If everything you wore, sat on, or used in your house was made by you or someone you knew, you valued those things. If the elbows and short shirt wore out, you would just shorten the sleeves or turn a worn collar inside out. Eventually, the fabric would be turned into a quilt or a rag rug or just a rag. This is a picture of clothing that women made from flower sacks, deliberate package recycling. During the Depression, use it up, wear it out, make do, or do without was the rule. With entry into World War II, the government sponsored campaigns to recycle nylons, tin cans, cooking fats, and even the tin and toothpaste tubes, all for the war effort. In the economic boom years of the 1950s, throwaway living arrived with the promotion of many new disposable items. Plastic was used extensively during World War II and easily transitioned into peacetime uses. In the late 50s, the economy began to be driven by the need to consume ever-increasing quantities of resources. By the early 1960s, billions of plastic items were filling dumps, landfills, and incinerators in the Western world. Between 1958 and 1976, Packaging and product consumption increased 63% per person. This included diapers and Dixie cups. By the 1960s, the first recycling programs linked to people's concern for the environment started popping up. That's when Rachel Carson and others were pushing the science of ecology and Lyndon B. Johnson started promoting environmental legislation. The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources was formed in 1967, with solid waste management one of its many departments. Wisconsin Senator Gaylord Nelson involved students in organizing conservation promotions for the first Earth Day in April of 1970. It brought to the fore nationwide many environmental concerns which needed to be addressed. 20 million people participated that first day, and it continues to be a worldwide day of environmental activism. Strong public support for recycling in the 80s and 90s led to curbside recycling pickup, combined with educational efforts. Previously, the few environmentally conscious people carted everything to private recycling centers. Gradually, cities and then counties organized the collection of recyclables figuring it out as the program evolved. Wisconsin was a leader then in developing comprehensive mandatory recycling. Some people question, how useful is recycling really? One of the few things Americans largely agree on is recycling. One group is particularly keen, people already concerned about climate change. Recycling alone cannot solve the waste, or climate change conundrum, but many believe it is a vital piece of an overall strategy. 
which also includes reducing packaging and replacing disposables with reusable materials. We recycle because it's good for our environment, it's good for our economy, and because in Wisconsin, it's the law. Since 1990, Wisconsin, the Wisconsin's recycling law requires all residents to recycle items like cardboard, bottles, cans, and ensures residents have access to local recycling programs. When you're careful not to put these items in your bin, you're preventing contamination of materials, being aware of the safety of people who work in the industry. Keep recyclables clean and dry and don't wish cycle with long stringy materials, tanglers and plastic bags. This was emphasized as the important things to remember at the, when we visited the MRF. Remember that you can find a copy of the recycling brochure on the Sustained Fond du Lac website and the City of Fond du Lac uh, recycling page. So I'm going to stop sharing. <laughs> It'd be good to see who, who was all here if you want to show us your face. Um, we have about eight minutes left, and I'm wondering um, if anyone has any. Let's see, we have some. Um, can we put can we put bread wrappers with grocery store bags uh, at the store? Yes, bread bread wrappers are uh, one of those. Um, types of plastic that is easily re recycled uh, when you take it to the uh, drop boxes at the grocery stores. Just shake out the <laughs> any, any uh, crumbs. Um, what about wax, cardboard, milk, and soup cartons? They're, they're recyclable, recycled in some places. Uh, I think in, at the Oshkosh uh, facility, they uh, take them, but our MRF does not recycle, does not have the technology to recycle those um, waxed cardboard containers. Is it preferred to remove the labels from metal cans or the plastic labels from bottles and cartons? I think, uh, they're, they're not requiring you to do that. I think they're, they have the, the technology is available that you don't need to. Um, I'm pretty conscientious about washing my, my cans in the, in, when I'm washing dishes or even putting them in the dishwasher. And um, the, it's often the, the labels come off very easily, um, but it's, it's not required. I'm wondering if um, there are other questions or um, or comments. Yes, Jill. It's not a question, but the UPS store will take styrofoam and and bubble wrap and whatever you get in packages from Amazon or wherever. So they they take everything, as far as I can tell, including big boxes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It, that's you know one of the local businesses. I, I think that that's listed on our brochure, oh. but it's one of the local businesses that you can take the initiative to um, mm -hmm. take it and and have it reused in the form that that's um, that it's in, mm -hmm. without <laughs> being reprocessed. That's a very nice point. Thanks, Jill. The um, Sustained Fond du Lac page has a, a link to the Department of Natural Resources, which has many um, wonderful detailed um, instructions about, um, for instance, what do you do with fluorescent bulbs or uh, all the different kinds of, of uh, batteries um, that was kind of beyond our, 
our ability to go into it at this moment. But um, the Department of Natural Resources is, is the organization that is in charge of uh, implementing or helping to implement the law. And then our local municipalities like the city of Fond du Lac is a, is a recycling unit that has to contract or has to make sure that there is um, recycling at the curbside and uh, special um, yard waste drop off and pickup of um, uh, electronics, you know, opportunities to uh, take electronic uh, co computers and so on. Um, there's a, a collection once a year that is scheduled as well as hazardous waste. So that's all part of um, what's required by the law. Any other um, comments or suggestions of, we have about three minutes before seven, suggestions uh, of the kinds of information that, that people might want to have. Um, this is Donna, I, just I'm hoping just to let people know uh, some of our surrounding communities still have bulky waste to pick up on the curbside. You can get it here in Fond du Lac by paying per item to do that, or you can do the drop off if you're able to and and pay a, a fee to do that at our bulky waste pickup. But we're talking about getting back to having a regular uh, citywide, either half the city one year and half the city another year or doing it every year. And it's just in the discussion stages, but um, certainly hoping that we can get support to do that again. And, um, and the idea is that perhaps we could do it in such a way that people would be allowed to, to go into people's piles <laughs> and take things that they can use and need. And the term that we use is free for all so that we can get things recycled from the curb that way before it goes into the landfill. So we'll see what happens with that, but keep your eyes and ears out for public hearings before the budget. And, and there are a couple questions. I wrote one additional oh. question and there's another okay. one. There. Jill, Jill was raising your hand. Go ahead, Jill. Yeah, I just wanted to add to that, Donna. In the past, when we've had bulky pickup, there was a rule that you couldn't go through people's trash. So I, I would really be grateful if we were allowed to do that because it, we might as well reuse it if we can. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. We'll, we'll see if, if it's popularized, it could occur. Mm -hmm. It certainly happens other places. <laughs> There's a question, can plastic containers from fruit, such as strawberries or raspberries, be recycled? Denise, are you referring to a things, uh, frozen strawberries? Fresh. She has to unmute. Yeah, uh, you're, you're muted, Denise. I'm talking about fresh fruit. They come in the plastic containers. You flip the lid and raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, strawberries come in from the fresh part of the fruit section. Okay, so in a kind of a rigid, clear mm -hmm. plastic container. Yeah. That, those, um, what are we calling those? <laughs> those? Those are not, our MRF does not want those. Mm -hmm. um, are they considered clamshells? Yes, thank you. I okay. had lost the word. And the, those are considered clamshells. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The best, I think the best you can do is try to save them and use them to give somebody else something in them. <laughs> but you get quite a cu an accumulation when you do that. Um, what do we use? Earlier, it was said that if you had a Ziploc bag, like radishes come in a bag that got a zipper on them, a uh, you know, resealable thing, it was mentioned that you should cut that zipper part off the bag. But some of those bags also have labels on them, like a sticky label. Does that paper label need to be cut out of it before I put that plastic bag in the bag that I take to the grocery store? Uh, yes, I think that's preferred that you do it. And 
many of them peel off quite easily, uh, at least before you get them wet. Um, likewise, uh, plastic bags that, that you get um, in the mail with like clothing or things that you're buying online, uh, those can be recycled generally, but I, if it has a paper label on, I always cut, cut that out. Um, and the, the, the zippered, zippers on the plastic bags really are uh, tear off very easily. You really don't, usually you don't, don't need to take a, a scissors to cut them off. That kind of plastic, in fact, um, to know that it's recyclable, it's, it stretches and it tears quite as easily. But as we, was shown on the screen about the um, kinds of plastic that you can take to the stores, I'm finding that there's an increasing number of labels on those plastic bags that, that tell you, yes, you can take them to um, a store drop-off place. Okay, and then there was a question. So when the caps are put on plastic bottles, is, are they recycled? Uh, yes, that's my understanding that they, they are. And plastic, I, you put the, plastic, you put the, the lids back on, but glass, you take the lids off. Right. Oh, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I have a comment about the fruit containers. My mom has had good luck taking them to the farmer's market um, at the right time of year. And if there's somebody that is selling berries, sometimes they've... Um, taken those containers and at least you know they get reused once mm -hmm. that's a good idea yeah the other thing that occurred to me and i haven't been doing it but I, I think i need to get better at it is when i have all these leftover containers um that's that the some of the meal programs in town are happy to receive those because then people can take the extra food home with them mm -hmm. collect them and drop them off to them right Yeah, it depends upon what will, people are willing to take. Sometimes some um, some people would be concerned about sanitation, probably, but it certainly doesn't hurt to ask. And it it, it brings to mind um, also the black pots that plants, uh, you know, little seedlings come in. Black plastic is not recyclable because a lot of the um, technology in the MRF depends on scanning, like, uh, and the scanners can't read a black plastic. Mm. So that's, that's something that um, I found, like even Hensies will take back uh, mm. black pots. So many people that are growing plants would, would probably be welcome taking welcome those. Well, it is after seven o'clock, and um, if there's no other, it, well, if if anyone needs to leave because we we advertise this as being 30, 30 minutes, feel feel free. But if there's any more questions, uh, I'd be glad to. We'd be glad to entertain them. Thank you, everybody. I'm incredibly valuable for half an hour spent. Amazing. Yes. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Agree. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Have a nice evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks bye so bye. much.